I lost my job, I lost my coaching career, I mean, I lost everything. I mean, it was brutal. I was like really drunk at a bar and I uh, confronted one of our other cast members about like what his political views might have been and I think I maybe that's the one thing I feel like I probably shouldn't have done. I mean sometimes you try and say something and it just doesn't come out perfectly. If it made somebody feel bad, somebody I care about, or like I feel bad about that for sure. I just kind of hate looking back at it and not feeling like I was my own person um, and and aligning with somebody who in the real world I never would have al aligned with. Yeah, I said a lot of out-of-pocket jokes on my show and a lot of people were mad. I don't regret saying any of it because at the time I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, it, it's who I am, you know? I say dumb shit. I mean, did I do stupid things? Maybe. Did I say things that were out of character? Maybe. I think for me regret would be a wasted emotion because through your mistakes, that's when you really grow. When we're doing all the right things, we don't ever grow. And so looking back on what I could have, would have, should have done, to me, um, doesn't make sense. I just use the mistakes and try to channel that into making a better person. The producers tried to portray me as someone I'm not. Three, two, one. I had such paranoia and such anxiety because of things that certain producers were trying to get me to say on the show. They tried to get me to body shame one of my castmates. They tried to get me to say some kind of mean, catty things that were very out of character for me, to the point where one of the producers who I liked and felt safe with jokingly called me Regina George because I would always express to him how I, how I hated that the other producers tried to get me to be a mean girl. When I got back, everybody was like, did you cheat? Did you, did you lie? Were you a villain? I was like, I'm, I'm gonna be a, a hero. And my father said it best about midway through the first season I was on. And he was like, well, I turned off the TV uh, midway through the show. They're making a jackass out of my son on national TV. I lost my job. I lost my coaching career. I mean, I lost everything. I got hate mail every day. I mean, it was brutal. So on the one side, I felt like the heroic parts that I did were not put in there. However, if I skip to this other side, I also feel like they film us 24 hours a day. I'm pretty eclectic. They picked up on that straight away. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were like, we're gonna just expand the boundaries. So when I watch myself, I'm like, that's not me. But then on the other time, I'm like, oh wait, that is me. I wish I was different than what the show shows. <laughs> like, it was, it was me, it, unfortunately. A lot of people didn't like it. Uh, me, and that's okay. I always wanted to be on a reality TV show. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> why am I not surprised? <laughs> I won most likely to be on a reality show in high school. Like, it's just, it's been part of my being. <laughs> I grew up watching Survivor, Big Brother, and The Amazing Race. Like those three shows had such a huge impact on my life growing up just because it was an opportunity for me to see other gay members of the LGBT community be a voice for someone like me from the Midwest who'd never really had that to look up to. When people said to me, man, I applied for this show for 10 years in a row, I'm like, man, you guys gotta get a life. I didn't, I, ne I, I never, oh, damn. Oh, sorry, wait, oh, sorry, sorry, no, but I mean, to apply a couple of times, but over and over, I never watched it. I didn't go out and, and specifically seek adversity with my cast mates, but at the same time, I was trying to push the envelope and do things differently uh, than they had ever been. It was really surprising though, like when you're watching, you get really nervous before the episode because you have no idea what they're gonna grab for the final edit. So when people would say, yeah, coach is such a jackass. I mean, I think that was hard, but at the, on the flip side, you know, I made some really strong bonds. I met my girlfriend on the show, and so like we, we get along pretty well, but all the other, the other cast were just so different. 
there's just no scenario that we would be hanging out other than just being forced to live together. I mean, I can get along with everybody. It doesn't mean I have to like them or respect them. And we get a lot of flack for associating with certain people. And it's like, what do you, do you want me to go against this person? Like, he's in power. I'm, I have to pretend to like him. Like, this is not real life, people. We have a group chat on WhatsApp with all 22 of us still to this day, and over half of them were able to come to our wedding in December. I recognize what we had was very special, but I also know that it's not for everyone. Viewers would be surprised about what happens behind the scenes. Three, two, one. The game is real, the competition's real, Every like aspect of that side of it is real. But every single conversation I have with and somebody who loves the show, you know, no matter how long they've watched it, they always say like, oh my gosh, that's so surprising. I didn't know that. So clearly it is, and for us even in the house, like week one, we were talking, we're like, wait, there's no screen in the diary room? Like mind blowing, like small things. So yeah, they're surprised. Like I'm not gonna say they're gonna, their life is gonna be rocked or changed. At the end of the day, it's a TV show, you know? So like you just see what's in front of the camera, but if the camera were to just like turn around once, there's a whole crew. If you were to tell someone like, oh, this happened behind the scenes, but they had watched the show, they wouldn't be like, oh, that, they'd be like, oh, that makes sense. That person seemed like that, that they would do that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? The behind the scenes, there's no behind the scenes. They are always, they're adamant. If we don't get it the first time, we will not ask you to recreate a situation. I never saw the host in tribal say, okay, hold on a second, let me ask that different. It's all one take. And when you're not on, when they're not filming something, you're on absolute strict lockdown. You can't talk to anybody. If the cameras aren't rolling, you don't talk to anybody else. And if you do talk to somebody else, somebody's gonna jump your shit. And they're gonna be like, shut up, you shut up, look that way, look that way. And you know, you're basically persona non grata when the cameras are rolling. No, I would say yeah, yeah, accurately. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Reality TV demonstrates the extremes. The world just isn't binary. Like, it doesn't operate in extreme. It shows you some things that are real, but it doesn't accurately reflect the world because, you know, that, that's... When people sit down and talk, they usually find out they have more in common uh, than they thought. It's interesting because fans really think it's real life. <laughs> And really? I mean, it's, I mean, they it's, do. it's crazy. I mean, somebody can say, yeah, Johnny Depp is Captain Jack Sparrow, and they can be less convinced of that than looking at us and saying, these guys, that's exactly how they are in real life. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, you know, it's a TV show. Most TV shows are not real. <laughs> People really do have a hard time realizing that this is not a real world situation. These scenarios you would never be in, and the high stress and the lack of sleep, I mean, at least, I did not sleep like for 99 days. It is not any normal situation that you would put yourself in. However, the emotions and the experiences that happen are very, very raw and very, very real. And I think anyone in those scenarios would have those raw, real emotions. And that's another thing that is hard, I think, for viewers to realize when they're so critical of how we responded to certain things. It's like, well, it, it, take my shoes. Please wear them and see how you would do. Sometimes what you say or an emotion you display might be used in a different context to fit a narrative that wants to be told for the overall show. Um, so I'm glad I didn't focus on the accurately. Oh, not that I am focusing on the accurately display of reality because it, it doesn't. It's not very accurate. I think it depends what your reality is. So if you're put on a show like Survivor, well, that's a weird forced reality that it's not, I mean, that's clearly not like what reality is, but if you're on like my 600 pound life, you're 600 pounds, you know? <laughs> that's their life, that's real to them. Yeah, I wish that viewers would realize the separation of reality, but also give us a little more grace in, in the flawed human moments. Reality TV is an important form of entertainment. Three, two, one. Mm. <laughs> I tried, I can't. Um, I think reality TV is good for showing like subcultures that we wouldn't know exist, but important? No. I mean, come on. Like, I don't think like we're learning valuable lessons by watching Guido's party. There's 
you know, certain shows that maybe lack value more than others. But at the same time, reality TV is so broad. There are actually a lot of very informational, very fascinating shows. I think that we can see ourselves in characters all the time. Uh, but I, I feel for so many, it's probably easier when you're looking at real, you know, real people. Oh, if I was in that situation, how would I respond? I feel like there is something intrinsically important about being able to put yourself in other people's shoes. I think it depends on the show. And I think everyone who's watching that show is going to have a different reaction to it. Like some shows may not have an impact on me where others might. But I'll never forget the impact that watching Survivor Africa season three, Frank and Brandon sharing popcorn and candy, watching a drive through movie in the middle of the African plains together was a gay man and a guy who's never interacted with a gay man before in his entire life. And just watching that interaction and that experience at such a young age had such a profound impact on me. Who won? Who won? Yeah. Come on, not, 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 not